Hey everyone, Matt Seuss here, and I have a video coming up where I'm going to be showing the results that I got from processing a raw file inside a Lightroom Classic, the latest version, and also from the early access Luminar Neo version. Now, this video that you're going to see actually comes from my brand new program that I have called Mastering the Digital Darkroom, and this is an online community and membership program where each month I have different themes, I talk about different programs for photo editing, we have a really nice cool community that I'm going to be building there. There's going to be one uh, monthly ask me anything zoom calls and just a ton of things I don't want to bore you too much on this but hey listen take a look down below I'm gonna have a link for this this is launching in January 2022 if you're lucky enough to see this video quick enough I have a special founding membership price on this subscription and otherwise even if you don't get here in January this is going to be an awesome community and I invite you to join me in mastering the digital darkroom but let's go ahead and take a look at one of the sample videos that is in that program and again, comparing Lightroom Classic to Luminar Neo. Hey everyone, I have a bonus video for you today and I plan on having bonus videos every once in a while to really help you get the most out of your membership here in Mastering the Digital Darkroom. And today's bonus video, what I'm going to do is take the photo that I worked on in Lightroom with our monthly theme using the new Lightroom masking tools. And what I'm going to do is take that raw file and process that in the new Luminar Neo. Now, Luminar Neo hasn't been officially released yet. I have access to a early bird uh, copy of it. And this early bird copy, this early access copy was given to people who uh, at the very least uh, did the pre-purchase when was that back in September or something like that, like three or four months ago. Um, I'm not sure if you pre-order it now, if you still get access to this early bird um, copy or not, uh, not sure on that, but um, you can always check into your Skyloom account at skyloom.com, sign in and see if you do have access to this early bird version. And what I'm going to do is process that same raw file that we did in Lightroom, process that in the early bird version of Neo. Now, just to uh, clear up some things here, this early bird access Neo, is definitely not full feature rich. It has, um, boy, it's, it's missing a lot of things that, uh, that will be in the final release version when Neo does ship. I think it's supposed to be, they've been saying February, might've gotten pushed back to March. I'm not sure. Uh, they're still saying, you know, by the end of winter. So I don't know if that means February or March, but that is coming out soon. And at least for the meantime, we have this early bird access, which, give, which gives us some idea on how the program's gonna run and some of the new features and, and whatnot. But again, it's not full feature rich yet. Uh, here we are inside of Lightroom right now. And this was the finish version that I did on this Tetons sunset uh, photo. Let's go switch over to Luminar and I've already started working on this. So I've already processed this photo. So we're going to sort of do a reconstruction of the steps that I did inside of Luminar Neo. Uh, one thing I do want to point out though, is that they have the tools over here and whenever you're working on the tools, whenever you make an adjustment and then switch to another tool, it's going to throw that into the edit section over here. This was really confusing to me when I first started using it. I was like, where the heck are all my edits going. Um, I, I haven't used Neo enough yet to really figure out if I like this workflow at all or not. Uh, there's some pros and there's there's some cons to it, at least initially right now. But the reason why they made this type of a workflow is so that they could speed up the program behind the scenes. So we can see here, these are all the steps that I did, starting with the develop, um, the develop module, the develop tool in the very beginning. Now, here's one of the things that's either a pro or a con, depending on what you're um, thinking of. It's actually a pro for me showing you um, the steps that I did, what ends up happening is when I click on that, it resets all of these other steps up here. It just hides them, doesn't make them visible. So you can't see any of the edits that I made in any of these other tools that I did, except for what I made in the develop module. And if we could see here, this is the original raw. So this is how uh, Luminar Neo first saw it. And what I did here in this develop uh, module, develop tool, uh, I changed the pro profile to camera vivid. I have the option of changing it. It was at Luminar default and I switched it to camera vivid just like I did in that Lightroom video. And I increased the smart contrast uh, plus 21, lowered my highlights minus 36 and increased my shadows um, plus 79. My concern was up in this cloud here and this was why I lowered the highlights to minus 36. I was starting to just lose some detail in this cloud up here and that was a concern and we'll we'll talk about this as you, as you see some of my other edits that I did on this on this photo. 
And I think that's all. Uh, no, I actually did a uh, slight curves adjustment. Let's go through here. Uh, so here's another inter interface issue here. You have to open up each one of these th things inside the develop um, tool, inside the develop module, to see what settings you did. So I did increase my whites. Uh, that was also where I was fighting with the highlights here by increasing my whites plus 29, increased my blacks plus 17. Uh, that was to darken up my, my darkest areas. Uh, did a little bit of an S curve on that. And let's see here in the color, looks like I left everything as shot, didn't do any saturation or vibrance. Uh, the sharpness, I didn't do anything there. The noise reduction, I did do a plus nine on the noise reduction. And let's see here, any auto optics, I didn't do any auto optics corrections or no lens distortion at all or anything else in there. So those were all the adjustments that I did in the develop module, which going from here, to here really got this photo going pretty decently. I uh, then went into AI Enhance, and we can see here, this was before and after the adjustments of AI Enhance. With a plus 30, what that, did not, uh, what that did for the photo was brighten up my foreground a little bit, darken my sky a little bit, gave some nice contrast, though, to the image, and makes it look, look a little bit better. Okay, next is the Relight AI tool, and this is a brand new tool that they have coming out with Luminar Neo, and it's supposed to relight your scene. It can help with photos that um, if you have a subject that's in the foreground that's really dark and the background is really bright, so you, know, you underexpose the photo, uh, it can help relight that a little bit. And I just did a little bit of playing around with this. Didn't do too much of an adjustment here, uh, but I did do adjustment of the brightness near, lowered the brightness far, and I had to increase that depth to 100. And we can see here by lowering that depth depth slider, you can see where it's, it's at, you know, zero on the depth. It's the shadows are all the way in the foreground there. So it's not relighting anything in my foreground. And I had to bring that all the way to plus 100 to at least have it start relighting things in the foreground here. It didn't go all the way back to the mountains though. Uh, didn't do anything with the dehalo or with the warmth near or with the warmth far. So again, we'll just take a look at the before and after. A little minor adjustment on that relight. The next thing I did was color harmony. And let's see here what I did in this. Uh, really minor, minor adjustment here. Just a little bit of brilliance and a little bit of warmth. We turn that off and on. The adjustments are so subtle on the color, color harmony. Uh, well, let's get back to uh, still not used to this workflow here in Luminar Neo. Let's go to color now. On the color... What I ended up doing here was, let's go to saturation. Uh, just like in the Luminar video, I needed to lower the blue intensity of that mountain. If we turn this off, you can see how intense that blue is. It was really, uh, really oversaturated and also a little bit dark. And we remember how in Luminar, I was able, or I'm sorry, in Lightroom, I was able to creatively select the mountain and have a mask on that and apply that. Uh, in Luminar, they just, their masking tools are not as sophisticated as they are inside of Lightroom now. So I'll show you what I had to do though. But first what I did was I lowered my saturation and then also increased my luminance, increased the brightness of the blues. And then I had to manually draw a mask. And let's see here if this will allow me to, let's see, show mask. Okay, good. So what I did was I had it applied to everything and then I used the eraser tool and increased the size and then erased the mask from the top and from the bottom so that it was only being affected in the mountains there. And so then that allowed me to have the blue being removed. And actually, if we look at that mask again, it looks like I missed a little spot here in the mountain. It looks like I have to paint in a little section over here that doesn't have the mask. So let me just go ahead and see if I can paint in in that area there. You can see how this does not give you as sophisticated of a mask as Lightroom does. Okay, there we go. So now... I went and did another instance of develop and let's see what I did for that. I increased my shadows a little bit more and let's see if there's anything else that I did in here. I think that was it. So just increasing my shadows just a little bit more before and after. Oh, and it looks like I also applied a mask to this as well. And if we show the mask, we can see that I needed to increase my shadows just in this center area here where the mountains were and a little bit of the foreground here uh, just to brighten that up. It didn't look really nice and balanced. So we can see that before and after. And let's go up a little bit further. I did another instance of develop and let's see here what I did. Okay, 
let's go through here. So what I did was I lowered my blacks and increased my whites uh, just one. So lowered the blacks minus 12, increased the whites one. And that was really just to give it just a little bit more contrast. You can see the image getting slightly darker from that. Uh, and let's go up on top here now. Next was structure. I needed to get some structure into these mountains. And we can see the before and the after with the structure AI. And I also did a mask on this too. And just like I had done before, apply it to everything, erased it from the sky, left the structure in the mountains and also in the, uh, in the foreground. And let's get back here. So that structure uh, plus 35, and that really started bringing out some of the details in the mountains. And speaking about details, I also did a little bit of uh, small details plus 12 and medium, medium details plus 11. And this was just applied to the mountains. So again, it was applied to everything. Use the erase tool and the mask to erase it from the sky and erase it from my foreground. And I think that was it. Okay. So I was pretty happy with this. I was kind of trying to make it look similar to what I remember from the Lightroom version. A uh, couple problems that I had in here, though. One in particular is up in the sky here. And we'll let this render out here. And let's see here. Okay, there we go. Now that's nice and rendered out. You can see just a little bit of blooming in here. And this is where I was really trying to keep those highlights down, trying not to get that little weird shape in there. Uh, it still ended up coming in here. So I'd have to do some more creative things going through this edit history thing to see if I can control that. But it seemed like it was coming from the relight, the enhancing AI or the relight area, where I was having some difficulty with that sky section up there. And then you don't really notice it too much, but when, until you do compare it with the Lightroom version, there's a little bit of, um, uh, there's, it's either clouds or it's some sort of error in the conversion here where you can see this little white uh, going up into the sky here. It's um, it's probably is clouds, a thin layer of clouds or something like that because uh, you can see some clouds over here, but it is a little bit more noticeable in this Luminar version than it is with the... Um, with the Lightroom version. And also over here too, this section here on the horizon, the far horizon is a little bit darker than in my, uh, in my Lightroom version. And let's go ahead and take a look at that Lightroom version again, just to remind us of that. You can see how that, that sky looks a little bit more natural up here. Uh, this over here, the that cloud, it doesn't have that blooming effect that it had in Luminar Neo. So that looks a little bit crisper in here. Noise reduction looks a little bit better inside of Lightroom. And I really like how this mountain really, really pops here. And there's not a lot of noise in that at all or anything like that. It is really nice and crisp. Now with Luminar, when you zoom in, it goes in a stage a little bit more than what, um, than what Lightroom does. So let's see here probably almost like a 50 or a 75% instead of 100%. But just looking at the mountain here, you know, it looks decent in, in Neo, Luminar Neo, until you then look at the Lightroom version. To me, that just looks a little bit crisper and a little bit more pronounced. The foreground looks a little flat compared to Neo. Let's zoom back out. There is a little bit more color in here. Uh, Comparing that to the Lightroom version, uh, this one here is probably a little bit warmer too, but uh, not bad at all. I mean, overall, either one of these, looking at them just without comparing them, looks really good, except for my eye just keeps on going up to this cloud here. I'd have to really do something to, uh, to fix that section up there. But um, not too bad of a comparison here. I do overall still prefer the Lightroom version. What do you guys think? Which version do you like? Do you like the Lightroom version or do you like the Luminar Neo version? Why don't you let me know in the comments below?